one type of problem you'll see is the metal block dropped in water. And uh, the question usually centers around the fact that uh, the Q, the energy transferred, uh, is going to be the same uh, between the metal block and the water. So whatever energy is transferred out of the metal, metal block is the same amount of energy that is transferred into the water. So our first step is to list the variables and uh, typically they'll be they'll be listed for you but they're not here. So our first thing is the mass of the water and it's actually given up here as 15 kilograms. Second, the heat capacity of the water, CP of the water. And that's going to be given to you as well. In this case, it's 4,181 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. Next, we want the heat capacity of the metal. And in this case, it's a copper block. OK, so you do have to be careful here. Uh, the heat capacity of copper is 385. And again, same units, joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. We also want the change in temperature of both the water and the copper block. So first the change in temperature of the water, well, in order to get that, the uh, delta T, the change in temperature of the water, is going to be basically equal to the 45.0 degrees Celsius that it was. Well, I'm sorry, the 45, that it becomes minus the 30.0 degrees Celsius that it started as, and we find that it's 15 degrees Celsius. So the change in temperature of the water, 15 degrees Celsius. And finally, the change in temperature of the copper. is going to be, uh, again, just the difference between the two. So it was 90.0 degrees Celsius, and it becomes 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, negative, positive doesn't necessarily matter here. It's just the, the difference. What is the difference between the two? So uh, in this case, it's 45 degrees Celsius. OK, so we have our variables. We want to know the unknown values and the unit of measure. Well, we want to, it's asking about the, um, the energy transferred. Uh, it's also going to ask about the mass of the copper block. So those are pretty typical uh, things to ask, ask for. Uh, and it ends up being that energy transfer is going to be capital Q. And the unit is in joules, capital J. Uh, the mass, of course, the mass of copper. We could write copper, I'll just write a little c. Mass of the copper block in kg kilograms. So we want to solve for our unknown variables, and there's really only one equation we need here uh, in this case and that is going to be that Q the energy transfer is equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the delta T the change in temperature and that's going to be for both so I'm going to actually write a little note here star both okay and we need to have it in terms of the individual what's going to be uh, special here is that uh, our Q of the uh, metal, whatever it is, in our case it's copper, is going to be equal to the Q of the water. So whatever, like I said up here, whatever energy leaves the metal block or leaves the water, whatever energy leaves one is going to go into the other. So the total amount of energy is going to be equal uh, no matter what. So that's going to be our little key here. 
we just need to make sure that uh, if we solve for Q in terms of metal, then all these other pieces have to be in terms of the metal. So in our case, we're going to solve for uh, water first because we have enough information to solve for water. So to solve for Q, we have the mass of the water. That's going to be multiplied. We have the specific heat capacity of the water and we have the change in temperature of the water. So to solve for Q uh, using the water, we have the mass of the water, which is 15 kilograms. We have the specific heat capacity of the water, which is 4,181 joules per kilogram per degrees Celsius times the change in temperature of the water, which is 15 degrees Celsius. And when we actually calculate that out, we get a rather large number, 940,725. And it's joules because this cancels out, those kilograms cancel out, and the degrees Celsius cancels out, and we're just left with joules. And that is our answer for the Q, the um, energy transfer. And the thing to keep in mind is that that energy transfer is going to be equal. That's what this was all about. So the energy transfer of the water is going to be equal to the energy transfer of the metal. And so we're going to use that same equation now to solve for the mass of the copper, the mass of the metal. So uh, we now we we are we know that the Q of the metal is going to be the same as the Q of the water. So we're going to use the same equation, but we're going to have it in terms of the copper, the mass of the copper. So the Q, of the, the Q is equal to the mass of the copper times the specific heat capacity of the copper times the change in temperature of the copper. So I'm going to actually not set that equal. I'm going to rearrange this formula. Uh, to solve for MC. So if I do that, basically the mass of the copper is equal to Q divided by the specific heat capacity of the copper times change in temperature of the copper. And so now we can just plug the numbers in. So the mass of the copper is equal to Q, which was 940,000 725 joules divided by the specific heat capacity of copper, which was, there it is, uh, 385 joules per kilogram degrees C times the change in temperature of the copper, which was, there it is, top 45 degrees Celsius. Okay, so when we calculate that out, the degrees Celsius will cancel out. Oops, that kilograms actually will not cancel out. But these joules will cancel out. And when we do the math, we end up with about 54.3 kilograms is the mass of our copper.